Welcome back to MSI 2023 and our second match of the day. CB Lols Loud facing off against Detonation. Focus me from the LJL first series. Latin America made it to the next round. Let's see if Loud can do it again for the region. And here, it's a grudge match, as we call it, in the LEC revenge match on the side of DFM and Loud. Loud lost at playing last year at Worlds 3 and 1 against DFM. Yeah, I think it's it's just two different stories coming through here again from the side of DFM. They're really looking to reclaim their glory days of the 2021 where they finally yeah. made it into groups. For Loud and CB LOL in general, it's an entire different conversation because they've actually never made it out of play ins and they're going up against DFM, who was their grudge map last year. And I do think it feels like a bit of a restructuring in some of the yeah. power rankings of these minor regions. The fact that LLA got their first win over what was at one point the strongest in uh, the piece, uh, excuse me, Vietnam. And yeah. now here it feels like, you know, Brazil was a region that was consistently trying to punch above their weight class. DFM had their run where it felt like they were emerging on the LJL. And so it's very cool to see this matchup now again, the second time in a row in play-ins yeah. and in a tournament where it does feel like CB Lowell looked pretty good against G2. They easily could have won one of those games. I mean, yeah, when you look at both teams, actually, they could have won one of these games. We talked about the G2 shenanigans, of course, and Loud, <laughs> despite an unfortunate first start of the game and jungle issues, they managed to bounce back in the early game, but it was not quite enough, GP. Yeah, I think it's really crazy because, as you said, both these teams should have taken a game in their respective series. For DFM, it was very much about them falling behind in the late game, coming back, or falling behind in the early game, rather, mm -hmm. coming back in the late game and then not being able to hold on to the ball. From the side of CB LOL and Loud specifically, it was the fact that they had a huge early game lead but they were not able to close out the game. And these are two different, two different respective timestamps of the game that the team struggled with. And to be clear for both teams, they took inhibitors of their opponents. Like yeah. it was a situation where it felt like this game was going to be over. Actually, I'm not sure if G2 ended up losing the inhibitor, just the turret dropped and then they got the engage uh, to defend it. But it did speak to the fact that these teams were within striking distance of taking those games and just came up a little bit short with their late game uh, mm -hmm. team fighting. What kind of game plan do we want to see here on the side of both these teams? I mean, we saw some Glimpse of hope in the early game, but how do you make it across the mid game as well to take in the victory in the end? Yeah, I feel like for both teams, it's really about finding that stabilization. Yeah. I think for DFM, more than Loud, actually. Loud's early game was really impressive against G2 in the first game. DFM have had issues with their early game in both of their series specifically. But I think it's about relying on some of your carries as well in that regard. Well, most reliable of all for me is the bot laners. For both these teams, mm -hmm. Root versus Utapon feels like the star matchup because in these games that were back and forth, both these guys felt like the primary carries for their teams. Yes, those KDAs are not absolutely insane, but you need to remember that these are in games where that you were 0-2. Yeah. So the fact that both these guys at one point had massive amounts of kills for their team, being those kinds of late game bombs is what one of them is going to outperform. And I do feel like Root is the small favorite in this matchup. Yeah, and that's also just how it's been domestically between the teams. For this side at DFM, you know, Tol 2 has been the weak side. They're playing for that AD carry down towards the bottom side. The same can be said for Loud. When they were playing domestically, it was whenever they were investing resources into their bot lane that they started performing well. But when they were cross mapping up towards the top side and left Root out to dry, they would actually often lose their game. So the AD carries are going to be incredibly pivotal in today's series. Well, how, how is it going to be top side also on this side, uh, Mark Zip? I, I feel like it's going to be Rob's uh, day today. It's definitely Rob's <laughs> day today. Uh, Toll 2 definitely struggled with his Malphite in the previous series. His Cassante looked a little better initially, but then started having some mistakes in team fights yet again. So while uh, Rob uh, Robbo does have a big goal difference at 14 that looks bad, you need to remember that was against Broken Blade, who's been hulking out all tournament long, and he did have a better lane phase in game one. I think uh, he actually was one of the key figures for why they almost won that series. His Renekton was very good. So I actually have a lot more faith, despite what some of these numbers might say, yeah. in his individual matchup. I completely agree, because if you take it into the context as well, well, you were playing a weak side into the Darius. Now Robo is the, the guy himself who does not mind playing mm -hmm. the Olaf. Uh, I, what I'm expecting out of today's matchup is Robo back on an Olaf. Robo on these yep. Renekton's. Take control of the lane. Abuse Toll 2 as hard as you can. Not so much that you can take control of a top lane, but use that pressure elsewhere on the map. That's where CB Law allowed so often have their success, is when they make Rob join the team with his leads. Well, here with this matchup, we have some of the minor region's fans' favorite. And let's see who the fans predicted to win in our MasterCard's Fats prediction. Each day, you can head over to at MasterCard Nexus wow. on Twitter to participate. And here, loud 43% of the votes. What? I feel oh. like in And DFM 57% of the crazy. votes. I don't think the fans in the venue agree. Fans are 100% win rate so far. What do we think? 
Let's go straight. Do I go this way? way? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I failed. Go for me. What are you I'm doing? terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Camera movement, no. I, I, I think this is going to be a tough game for the yeah. FM specifically because they would have to bandage Toll 2 up towards that top lane. I think it becomes easier to play the game if you are allowed going into this game just due to the fact that some of your laners have been taking more control and I think DFM specifically, domestically, was a bit reliant sometimes of getting the individuals to shine. I think if there's one ace up the sleeve that we haven't seen perform just yet for DFM, it would be Ari as well. Yeah. Not necessarily on the likes of Annie, but we have seen him pre Previously, bust out assassins, bust out champions where you take control of the matchup, and that is something we could look forward to in this matchup today. Returning Arya from the LCK, he's been a killer element, as you said, in this detonation. Focus me lineup so far. Do you agree? Quick take off. Yeah, absolutely. I'm expecting loud. Despite people putting DFM, I think that is just the everyone's second favorite region to vote for is. DFM, Power of Anime, everyone's now a fan of, of mm -hmm. them. So, But also very cool players. Everyone, Evie with this thumbs up, made a lot of fans over the years. So I think there's a lot of DFM fans, but uh -huh. Loud should actually be favored in the well, matchup. Before we head over to Medivedi, let's hear from DFM support Harp on what he thought about this series versus PSG. It's <laughs> 진게 좀 많이 아쉽고요. 저희가 일단 운영적으로 좀 실수가 좀 많았던 것 같아요. 일단 뭐그 장로를 저희가 먹고 발언까지 나오는 상태에서 좀 다른 팀원들 기다리면서 장로 늦게 먹었고 가다가 이제 발언 먹힌 거 이제 뭐 그런 실수나 이제 뭐 싸움 한 한타에서 이제 좀 디테일이 좀 많이 떨어져 가지고 유리한데도 좀 반반 나오거나 좀 그런 상태가 좀 많았어 가지고. 사실 이 플레인 조 전체에서 BLG 다음으로 PSG가 두 번째로 강한 정도라고 저는 좀 생각을 했었어 가지고 이제 뭐 사실 라우드든 저희가 아까 얘기한 뭐 실수 같은 거좀 보완하면은 좀 무조건 이길 수 있다고 생각해서 어, 라우드 전 만약에 이기고 다음에 뭐 PSG 다시 두 만난다면 꼭 PSG 다시 만나서 복수하고 싶어. Patience. How many people in solo queue greed for that turret and die? How many pro players do? Oh! Or greed for this vision and die. It's Junja caught out. A great little pick for the FM. But now Yubao wants to go for the fight anyway. Gets the charm onto Harp. There's a crescendo onto the backside as well. 작년에 제가 라우드 상대했을 때랑 멤버 그 원딜 선수가 루트 선수로 바뀌었는데 루트 선수 제가 한국에 있을 때도 굉장히 잘하는 원딜이었다고 생각하는데 여기서 다시 만나게 돼서 어좀 반가운 것 같고 그리고 이제 사실 라우드는 좀 뭔가 엄청 공격적인 팀이라 해야 되나? 그래서 그런 거를 좀잘 대처해야 될것 같아요. 팀이랑도 질만하다고 생각해서 열심히 해야 될것 같아요. 이제 오늘 보고 저라도 엄청 좀 실망하고 화났을 것 같아서 정말 죄송하고 뭐 아직 뭐 끝난 건 아니니까 뭐 충분히 다른 저희 그룹에 있는 다른 팀들 다 이길 수만 이길만 하다고 생각해서 다시 준비 잘해서 다음 경기부터 잘 준비하도록 하겠습니다. Great to hear from Harp and his thoughts on the prospects for the team going into what is a decisive match between Detonation Focus Me and Loud. I'm Medic, this is Vedi, and we're here in London for an elimination game. I just dropped my pen. <laughs> Shows how nervous Great I am. Great start Vedic. to yeah, be it's, event, it's, it's, incredible, right? it's a pleasure to Not have you here. Action. We had a bit of action yesterday, yeah. but it's not a bit of London without a bit of Medivedi, am I right, my man? I mean, it's the first time we've ever cast together on UK soil. Yeah, man, it's, it's crazy, very exciting. absolutely crazy. We're here for a bang of a matchup with DFM versus Loud. Thank you, Mark. That's you, can <laughs> <up> my <laughs> <laughs> you heard from Harp how he himself acknowledges that the performance of DFM was not to the level that they expected, yep. right? And I think that Loud will feel equally as frustrated. They were so close to taking down G2. It would have been a momentous win for them, and the series could have looked very different, but... Uh, they're going to have to bounce back today. It is an elimination, best of three. The loser will be knocked out of MSI. The winner will move on for an opportunity to play against PSG, just then have an opportunity to then fight to get out of this, uh, the, the, the playing state. Yeah, and DFM were equally close to beating PSG in that second game. They had a 6, 7,000 gold lead in the mid game before one decisive fight around the Baron cost them that matchup. Both these teams obviously sitting at 0-2, but a lot of 
not only history from this tournament, but history from last year between Loud and DFM as well. Because you have to remember, it was DFM winning their first ever international best of five that knocked Loud out of Worlds in 2022. Yeah, there's a bit of history between these two teams, and you know that Loud is going to be hungry for vengeance. You can hear, or you should be able to hear the fans in the audience. There is a dedicated group of Loud fans that have been supporting them throughout. So in terms of fan support, DFM will have to fight that sixth person on the rift. But some respect, I can already see it in the chat. Both teams showing respect to one another. I'm excited to get into the match. I'm curious as to what the priorities are. We did see that Malphite coming out for uh, Toltu in the top lane. It wasn't that great. It, it, was, it, was, it was something that in the team fights, his target prioritization was not optimal. But we know that this is his first international event. Having a taste of the stage now, being a little bit more comfortable. I hope we get to see a little bit cleaner team fighting. Obviously, the start of this day, we didn't see the cleanest of team fights. So I'm curious as to what these teams are going to bring out as we get closer to draft. Thankfully, we saw a lot of team fights, though. And that's the kind of League of Legends true. I like to watch, Vedia. So we'll see if these teams opt into that team fighting style that has been so prevalent, or if we see something different. Because as you said, Toll 2 might be a point of focus for Loud Robo. Obviously, a very strong, a very storied top laner for the Brazilian squad. And if you can give some, him something he'll carry on, you know that he's going to be able to accomplish great things in the top lane. Varus being taken off the board alongside Lucian. So right now, the AD carry priorities. We know that Root is a big Aphelios player. We'll see if that's something that they want to try and prioritize in the draft, or if that's something that perhaps DFM want to get rid of. Right now, a lot of the power picks are still up and available. Annie being one of the big ones that you have to think about, especially Arya. Pretty sure he's undefeated on the champion so far this year. A champion very comfortable for him. Olaf, of course, something that is very prevalent in the meta. We saw Broken Blade decimating 80 carries yesterday on the champion. And DFM going to look to remove that one. So now the question is, where will this priority shift? What is still going to be left up open? Wukong, something that we've seen a lot from Steel already here at this MSI. It's something that is still up and available. The Rakan, of course, going to be taken off the board. And obviously things like Jinx, like Aphelios, still very much at the forefront of our minds when we are looking towards an AD-focused meta. We have seen that uh, the game can be defined by the AD carry role. Nautilus as well getting banned away. I will say, I'm a little sad that there's so much mid naught flex because there's a naught one trick in solo queue. I now have my mid laner saying, hey, you know, I, I could take that mid. It's like, you, you don't understand how to play this champ. <laughs> you think the queue is easy to hit? Um, but now, Loud going to lock in the Maokai to kick things yeah. off. Only Croc's second game on the Maokai this year, Betty. Wow, okay. Well, we are European casters. And throughout our playoffs, we saw a lot of Maokai yeah, priority, especially when Vi was taken off the board. Here at MSI, it's not really been that same level of priority. The Vi's, the Wukong's, Lee Sin's, like basically aggressive, powerful early game junglers are what we've been seeing. But LLL are accepting that there's going to be a lot of fights. Yep. They want to have that strong team finding tool, and the Maokai is going to come through for them. Surprised to see DFM prioritize the Ari so early on. Of course, Arya, we know him as a prevalent Ari player, but typically you want to pair it up alongside things like the Vi, but the expectations are that Steel will go for his tried and true Wukong. Yeah, getting the Wukong Ari is almost as good as getting the Vi Ari. does still give you that lockdown potential, and Arya played it five times this year, won four of them. And in the uh, LJL finals, he had an absolute tear of a performance. Those on fans the are box. excited for an Aphelios. Are they really are. <laughs> <laughs> like, give it to Root. He carry for loud, and there is the Aphelios locked in. So Aphelios Jinx is going to be our bot lane and pairing. We'll see where the supports decide to go after this. I wonder if loud will decide that mid lane should be their prio here to make sure they get something into that RE. Lissandra, obviously, still a possibility. Very weak mid jungle duo if they did decide to go yeah. for that. Of course, in terms of the matchup, can be very effective. You know, something like a Vega could be something that they think about if they want to go for something a little bit more scaling. Annie, though, still up and available, often can be used as a very effective tool into Ari, but they're not going to go for it. Instead, they want to make sure that Robo gets something comfortable for him, and now it kind of forces DFM to answer. Do they want to try and respond by getting a top laner for themselves? Do they perhaps want to get the Thresh for themselves right now to guarantee a strong bot side of the map? Maybe they want to secure the Wukong because they want to make sure that they have that strong mid jungle. An interesting force here from Lamb. Yeah, you put DFM in a little bit of a bind, right? Because you know that Hole 2 has not had the best of performances so far at MSI. It looks like they're going to prioritize getting a strong bot lane. Lulu Jinx, incredibly powerful if you can scale into the game. But now, Loud can just look at banning out top laners. Get rid of the Gragas that Toll 2 has so often relied on. Get rid of the Scion or look towards that Cassante and you can really pinch the ball 
for DFM's top side. Yeah, I do wonder if they'll consider something like the Malphite, the Cassante. Yeah. A lot of options. Meanwhile, DFM, they can look. But remember, the Wukong still, True. I think, would be a very effective ban right now. Mm -hmm. Um, perhaps they're saying to Robo, you know what, you're actually very comfortable on this champion. We think you can play it very safe into a number of matchups. Uh, let's not bother risking it. Instead, let's prioritize limiting that jungle pool and kind of force steal. No, nope, instead, they'll make them. They'll ban them out. Like, okay, that also makes sense. It does make a lot of sense. Even though Toltu didn't have the strongest performance on it earlier in the competition, I think that it does make sense to just remove that. I still remember Whippo when he brought that out as an answer into the FLS, and he was just running around solo, yeah. killing the champion. Spamming emotes. <laughs> it's, just, it, it's been seen throughout this year how effective this champion can be into low mobility AD carries. Um, and obviously they want to get that off the board. Of course, Tom Kench is very much directed towards Seos, something that he has often gone for when we do see uh, Root on his Aphelios, and the Thresh obviously makes a lot of sense. No peel for Root today. It just means that, that Aphelios is so much more vulnerable to attacks, especially since you have Arya on the Arya already. He can just get towards that backline really quickly with the Spirit Rush. Uh, there is, of course, the twisted advance from the Maokai to try and stop him in his tracks, but can be difficult to, to keep a handle on the Fox. The Wukong, the next ban, loud agreeing with you that they don't want Steel getting his hands on the Monkey King. And now DFM looking towards a tank in the top lane. Kel Surprise. Scion, the likely option here for them. Toltu can just try to survive the lane, scale up, and then be a meat shield for his backline later on. Okay, we saw how effective Bin could be on the Scion yesterday. Just such an effective wall for the Jinx to play around. And already you can see that with DFM's composition, a very traditional front to back, it feels like the both teams are going for more of this team fight style. Depending on how they round out with their mid laner will determine a lot in terms of what Loud can do in the early game. But when you have an Ari, I wouldn't be surprised to see DFM going something like a Zin, a Lee Sin, something that gives them a little bit of agency That's in locked, the mid jungle. That will be the Swain. Of course, Swain can be flexed into support as well. So I'll hold my breath for the time being to see what direction it goes. But Tinone's known for playing that Swain in the mid, so wouldn't be surprised to see it into Ari. A very old school counter. If you want to go back into league history, season three world championship, it was Nuke Duck that brought the Swain out into Faker's Ari. Idea, good. Back then, didn't really work that out for Nuke Duck though. The best. Yeah. <laughs> but um, Swain is a very tanky, he's a, he's a drain tank effectively. Makes it harder for Ari in these sustained fights to be able to really do much against him. Charm can always be a very effective tool, but still, it's a very safe pick that can mitigate that pick potential that Ari is often looking for. And it gives Loud a lot of impetus in terms of going oh, forward. Wow. You just run at the enemy team. Rounded out here for DFM is the Nidalee for Steel. Be piloting that in the jungle and both teams do want to look towards that team fighting. You have a meatball for DFM in the Scion, a bit of poke and then catch potential from the Ari on the side of Loud though. Three meatballs just walking at you, four if you add the Leona in there and a Belios standing at the back and hoping that no one can get on top of him. Yeah, so it's basically just a lot of front to back. I think that you have to give Loud the advantage when you talk about straight up team fights. They have so much durability and as long as Root is left untouched, he's just gonna be free to dish out an unbelievable amount of damage. Just because you've chosen to draft the Nidalee does mean that you can leverage some of the priority that you should be able to get in lanes like mid um, to be able to set up invades, try and punish the Maokai early on, who's gonna struggle to mitigate the pressure that can come out from this Nidalee. But in terms of the team fights, Nidalee just doesn't offer the same level of utility that a Maokai does. So around these neutral objectives, it's gonna be really important that DFM try and get on those objectives first so they can leverage their poke rather than being forced to have to face check into the Maokai. The Nidalee also, of course, gives you a little bit more early game pressure. You can do a little bit more around the map. You can look for those dives. And if you can put tanks behind in the early game, it takes them a lot longer to get back into the game, to actually become tanks, because you still have a Jinx. You still have that consistent DPS in a fight for DFM. If they can win out this early game, this composition is looking very well rounded for them. The question is, can Loud keep them on the ropes? Loud, of course, no slouches in the early game as well. We saw them take G2 to task before losing out on a couple of mid-game fights. It's do or die for Loud and DFM as we get onto the rift. And uh, across the board, no real surprises. I'm just looking to see, you know, Fleet on route. It's okay, it does give you a bit of sustain. You have uh, the lethal tempo for Udapon. Arya running the unsealed spellbook as well. And another first spear lands, Betty. Croc eats it. <laughs> Steel gives him a little bit of a sad beat. Yeah, it's calibrating, as you often have to do on the Diddly, you know. Spear miss here, spear miss there, but it's all about downloading your opponent. Yeah. Right, you know, 
is, are they the type of player that will continue to run forward, or are they a juker, you know? True. As a support main yourself, you're very familiar with that. If it's Crank Nautilus, you've always got to know which direction your opponent oh. is going in. Well, Robo there didn't run. He didn't. <laughs> so, and that, that can be the biggest mind game of, game of all, you know? Just press S. Press S, yeah. Is uh, Aftershock Maokai here? Not really looking for that AP. We have seen some First Strike Demonic builds, but expectations are that Croc will just be trying to be as tanky as possible, as strong a front line as available for his team. Nice as well. On that, any early vision being invested. You can see a little bit of protection being offered in terms of early wards in the river from Loud towards the bot side of the map and the entrances to the jungle. We'll see if any early invades come out from DFM. My expectations are that they will look for something with this Nidalee pick. The question is what? Right now, Nidalee doing a full clear on the top side of the map. But overall, nothing too dramatic. As a reminder, DFM and Loud yet to win a game so far here at MSI. Very good trade for yeah. Tin Owens in the mid lane. Against Arya, level, getting that level two advantage, able to land the binding with the E. Getting a favorable trade off. You can see priority in the bot lane. I was actually expecting Arya on the R Ari to be able to get pressure early on in this lane, but Tin Owens being able to get that good trade means that he will have the push. Moves into the bot side river, will drop a ward immediately. And again, a lot of this is to give information to Croc, as he might be looking for a bot lane gank already. All right, Harp and Udipon are quite far pushed up here. Steelers around the mid lane as well as Tin Owens has three. that wave trying to crash. Tin Owens still on level two as Arya gets the charm, but the flash away from Tin Owens means that he will survive. Steel diving in, though the never move won't land, and Steel gets first blood. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, all ado about nothing as the gank doesn't materialize from Croc. Wow, but Croc is looking for it now, has the level three. They are stepping forwards, and it played flash by Harp. Good preemptive there. Steel can look to try and catch out this tree. The sapling's going to do a little bit of work, the knockback with Rambo Smash as Croc now isolated. Another spear blocked Ooh. by Seos, that shield working well for Leona. Very good block there by Seos, a much needed one as well. Steel was definitely looking for it, but already DFM off to a great start. A 900 gold lead as they find a big kill on the mid lane. Arya going with the charm level two. Not what I was expecting. I thought he was going to tick over to level three and then take the charm, and then that was what they were looking for. But I think it caught Tinones off guard as well, as he was forced to flash early, and then Steel was able to land a great spear. So first blood drawn for the LJL squad. And it's also part of that proactive communication, right? Because it, it, Arya could have had the push here. Maybe he seeded it to allow Tinones to push a little bit too far forward and then called Steel in for the game. Charm comes out, force the flash, and this makes it so much easier for Steel. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, Harp, no flash on him. He'll go down. Root's going to take the kill. Steel trying to come in from the side as well as Udipon. Does a little bit of damage, but Root and Seos able to escape. You burn the flash and the ghost to do so. So a nice advantage gain back for Loud as they're able to find a 2v2 kill. Steel is hovering, though. Keeping my eyes on the mid lane, perhaps Arya could be looking for a roam, but for the time being, he's going to stay in mid lane as we see Croc make his way up towards the top side of the map. Good awareness from Croc, noting that he can get the cross map here, he's going to have to concede his jungle. And again, great vision from Loud overall. They're doing a really good job of doing their best to keep track of where Steel is and what he's up to on the map. Fortunately, for Loud, Steel was able to navigate through some of this early vision, find some good ganks, but uh, Croc now setting up. I don't think they're going to dive Tol to in the top lane. Sion, a notoriously difficult champion to die with only two members, but Steel continues to hover around bot. You know if you put Root behind, if you get Udipon ahead, that is DFM's win condition. Udipon has been with this team for so long, they have so much trust in him that uh, allowing him an early lead can reap dividends for the Japanese lineup. I'm surprised if we don't see Udipon just shoving that wave in. I imagine that they'll look to shove the next wave in as quickly as possible, force Cloud's bot lane to lose as much harm as they can, as they need to get a reset of their own. But if we evaluate this early game, Betty, overall, DFM very much in the ascendancy. About 700 gold ahead. Yes, Root was able to pick up a kill, but they're losing minions down here as well. 100 gold the difference between the AD carries in the mid lane, a 300 gold lead for Arya, and just look at that jungle. 500 gold advantage for Steel right now, Betty. Yeah, a lot of the advantage is just sitting on the Nidalee right now. And again, huge props to Steel. It's what you need to do on this Nidalee, and we need to see Steel continue that level of aggression. If he's not able to find more in this early game, I feel like that when we get to those later game team fights, we talked about how Loud do have a big advantage just with the sheer amount of crowd control that they have with their composition. Maokai, Leona, Nar, 
Even Swain is just going to be a giant beef yeah. ball that you're going to struggle to get through. Have to remember Swain's passive. When uh, enemy champions die, or when he hits people with you know his W or his E, he gets stacks, and that gives him bonus health. He also heals when he collects those stacks. You can become very tanky on this champ just through that passive health. The same, of course, with Zion. Or Toltu up towards that top lane. And I think this Zion pick actually very smart from DFM because it's very difficult to shut down a Scion. It's very difficult to stop Scion from doing what he wants to do. Loud have realized that. They're basing most of their attention down towards this bottom side, and DFM perhaps looking for a fight as the Zenith Blade lands up towards the top side. Avi already caught. He's going to spear rush away. The Ignite is ticking, and Root will take him. The charge coming in from Tall 2, but he's a little bit late to the party. That train not on time. We are in England after all. A good pick from Loud as they're able to catch Arya completely out of position. He tried to move his way into the river, but there was no support from the bot lane. Seos with a great pick means that Loud have claimed the goal lead for themselves. This early game going back and forth, but Loud in a much more comfortable position. And the fact that Root is the one with two kills in his back pocket is definitely a great position for Loud to be in. Will Steel now look for something top lane. Good CC coming out from Tall 2. Yeah, Robo has just gone mega, so that's going to start timing out now. And Steel knows that's his opportunity to look for something here. Robo does still have the Gnar. Looks for the house against Tall 2. Gets the stun with the wallop, but here goes Robo down into that mini Gnar. Good Gnar across the wall before he expires. Steel dashing forward. Robo still has the flash and will escape the gang. Well played there by Robo. Information now gained. Oh, Steel! Ooh, flashed! Flash spear! Oh! Good reactions there from Robo. He will be able to sidestep that, and that is a big commitment. Croc should be able to get the blue. Oh, the smite comes out from Steel. Croc didn't have a smite, so in the end, Steel was always going to be living up to his namesake on that blue buff. And he was. Walks away with a small advantage. But great navigation from Robo. He's just able to circumvent that gang. All right. Arya has. Aria playing Ari, not going to be confusing at all during this <laughs> cast. Uh, uh, moving into Fog of War, I was going to say he can threaten something bot side, but obviously there's no bot lane to threaten right now. Seos getting out onto the map as we have the Rift Herald alive means that Loud could look for something. Right now it's just both supports hovering mid, Heart mainly to provide cover, while Seos looking for an opportunity. About half a level away from 6 4, both of them. Steel is coming in from the side here as well, but Seos can tank those spears. The Eclipse, of course, giving you extra armor and magic resist. That W means that he's willing enough to take a spear to the back as Croc starts up the Rift Herald. Now he is on this Scuttle Crab, the vision of a way to DFM. They might play bot side here as they know the route is a little bit pushed up and none of his team is on that side of the battlefield. Harp and Steel on their way. Root has red, white, and those are the guns that you don't really want to fight into, but in a 3v1. I think they would have been able to win it out. Instead, they just forced Root away from the tower, away from the wave, and the Rift Held will go over to Loud. Good patience as well from Root not to step up. Knows that he is playing weak side right now, so backs away and allows DFM control of the lane. It's really important that DFM are able to get some plates off the back of this, because by committing this many members and just conceding over the Herald, they need to be able to get some advantage back. But Root did a really smart thing, pushing in that bot wave as quickly as possible. Yes, it did cost him a bit of farm, but look at that, only a single plate secured, and now who's back out on the map? Croc. Level 6 secured for Seos, and he's making his way bot lane immediately. Tinone's looking to try and get a push in mid. We can see Robo already moving in the fog of war. <laughs> the spear doesn't quite connect once again. Root able to sidestep, but DFM doing a good job of clearing this wave out as quickly as possible. You can see the loud committing to this dragon. And they have their eyes on funneling those plate, that plate money rather, into root. Give your AD carry as much gold as possible. Everyone else will become tankier as the game goes on. The AD carry is the one you want getting those items. And right now, root in prime position to carry this game for loud to get them one step away from winning their first ever international best of five. It was DFM that denied our best of three, sorry, best of series. It was DFM that denied them in a best of five at last Worlds or losing to RNG later on. That gold lead that we saw from DFM early, Vedi, now disappeared, disappeared into the ether as Loud have caught up. They still have that Rift Herald on Croc, but it looks like right now, the key oh, point of focus, ball. Solar Flare, Spirit Rush away. He needs to stop entering the river like that because that's the second time he's been punished for it now. Look at Tinones though, he flashes, knocked up, not knocked up with the Decimating Smash, and in the end, it's a Summoner 
for an ultimate. Aria no longer has the Spirit Rush, but Tin owns with no flash, probably won't want to approach this bot side river. I was wondering if DFM would set up around the dragon, but it continues just to be steel, looking for damage, looking for picks. Sails, no solar flare. Only about a third of the cooldown off of that. Croc coming in from the side as well. Tinon's working his way down. Aria, no TP on the spellbook right now. Does just pick up the Everfrost. And because of that, DFM will realize perhaps we don't want the fight yet. Let's wait for our mid laners to be back on the map before we really pressure any further. Robo with the TP as well. Well, Toltu does not have his. Fan support continuing to be strong and allowed. The Herald, why don't you be dropped in mid lane? We're in Europe, will we get a cheer for it, Betty? There we go, the Root's gonna come out with a never move though, as Tinones is ignited, Aria should be able to clean up the Rift though. Just two plates going down from it, Zap onto Seos, Steel coming in from the side as well, but DFM just looking for poke damage more than anything else right now. Seos misses the Zenith Blade, or it was dodged by Udipon, depending on your point of perspective. And it has been a lot of dancing around this bot side of the map without too much result for DFM. Root has really been able to mitigate a lot of this. To be fair though, the AD carry is still very similar in gold because Udipom was able to secure those plates. And the Herald has actually dropped in mid, so not, not that much great effect. DFM are first on the objective, but Croc with the ultimate is going to drop it. Mage of Grass goes down, Sales has the Solar Flare as well. The Root's going to land onto two, the Solar Flare as well onto half. You have to watch him, the Wild Goat's still available as the Dragon is stolen away. Steel's going to have to jump out of the back of the pit, but, but Root is keeping him in place. Root gets the kill, Udipon flashing away, half trying to escape as well. The cleanse, the blast go, knocks Udipon into his demise. Seos flashes over the wall to escape Aria, and Loud get the dragon, get two kills, and get the hell out. Loud walk away victorious as DFM is left scrambling. A very easy executed fight for Loud as they drop the Maokai ultimate. The follow-up is clean, and DFM are left with nothing but a base to go back to. The fans are elated, and as a reminder, this is a best of three to determine who moves forward in the play-ins and who will be eliminated a lot on the line. Game one so far going in favor of Lamb. We'll have another look at this fight because it's about the crowd control. It's about the ability for Lamb to lock up DFM. So the focus initially becomes the support, the Lulu. The chain CC follow up after the Maokai ultimate into the Leone ultimate, but Root says, no, I'm good. And focuses Steel, says this is an easy kill, doesn't have the W available until the last second. The Q comes out from Root to help secure that kill, and then they turn their attention to the remaining members. Now, Tino's just proving his durability here. He's holding off two members alongside Sales, or three members rather, and just soaking up time, buying time for his AD carry to finish the job and move on to the rest of the team. Here you can see the win expectancy presented by AWS and how it has dramatically shifted in favor of Loud. Some pretty happy fans in the audience having a look at that. I will say, I think I've seen the win expectancy be wrong a couple of times, so don't take it as gospel. I mean, my favorite that... one was when the win expectancy, like for G2 or something, was 100%. Yeah, and Steel, <laughs> looking for Robo, does have that Meganar coming up, and I think this is kind of indicative of how the early game's gone for DFM. Robo just standing in the face of Toll 2 and Steel and taking as much damage as they can put out, and still, has a third of his HP, can just walk away from this one. It's becoming trickier and trickier for DF uh, DFM to actually find the damage to kill their opponents. Because yes, you have a Jinx who are hyperscale, but no Kraken Slayer yet on Udipon, no Gale Force on him either. Aria only has an Everfrost. Steel doesn't even have his first item, and your DPS is just lacking when you look at how tanky Loud are. I mean, they drafted a very difficult to execute composition. The only lane that they could really play through is mid. You look at bot, what setup do you have? Especially into a Leona, a Felios. If your mid could get easier prior and they could set up some four-man dives bot lane, I think that would have been a better option for them in the early game. But the reality is the DFM haven't been able to snowball this early game lead in their favor. And uh, now we find ourselves in a position where Loud are very comfortable knowing that these fights are only going to get better for them. Robo trading very well. Good wall up there, I'm yeah. very surprised if Toltu... I talked about the bot lane dives, here comes it now. Yeah, they're looking for him. Polymorph's gonna go down onto Root, they get the dive, they get the kill. DFM get one, Root shut down. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Seos looking for something. But no support to protect Root means that they weren't able to keep him alive. That's the charge straight into the wall with a flash from Toltu. Sometimes you just got to head for the wall and flash out, sending a I message, I think the I goal guess. there was just to mitigate the crowd control yeah. so that he then had the winner to flash out. Of course, doing it at the last second means that he didn't quite get the direction he wanted to go in. 
This tower's gonna die. Yeah, and Told he may very realizes. well die immediately afterwards. Zenith Blade chases him down. There's the stun from the shield of Daybreak as well. The Ignite is taking a robo, secures the kill. It's his day so far. And it's definitely Loud's day overall. A thousand gold lead for them now as they push in this mid lane. Tin owns against three, just controlling the map. See, now, of course, with Arya roaming bot lane and no plates up anymore, it's very easy for Tinon to do some serious damage onto that mid lane tower. He pushes out the mid wave, starts hitting onto that objective, and you can see that even though they're able to find a kill onto Root, they're finally able to shut him down. It doesn't really convert to much map control, so Loud's still very much in control of the game. The Dragon spawning in about a minute's time. I mean that Loud can easily set up for this, and we can already see them doing that. Root pushing in that bot wave. Going to shove it underneath the tower. Croc trying to get a little bit more deep vision. They have that mid control. Now, DFM do have some good wards placed behind in the enemy's jungle, but I don't know if Toll 2 is going to be able to really leverage that to find a good fight in favor of DFM. No ultimate yet for that sign. It would make it a bit tricky to really join the fight. We've seen how good Robo is at canceling the decimating smashes as well with a wallop of his own mid lane cleared out. Loud grouping up around this blue buff. They have the Rift Held charging in. Shirley will do a little bit of work, but with no minion wave, quickly culled. And Loud will back away. As you save, Eddie, those seven seconds on the ocean, Drake would be good for Loud to continue the stacking, to continue control, because it's not only about the dragon itself, it's about forcing DFM into a fight later on. Udipon pulled back with the Nar, cleansed away, but the Solar Flare finds his mark, twist and advance forward as well, and Tenon's gonna tank up the tower. That mid lane tower is still standing, but DFM not doing that at all. Udipon falls. And now Lau pushing in the 4v5. The turret goes down. Charge away from Toll 2. But Robo keeps the rest of DFM at bay. Loud in the end, get the kill, get out and look for the dragon. And Loud just playing this very smart. Group up as a five-man stack. Don't give DFM the opportunity to find any picks. Don't allow DFM to leverage their mobility to catch you off guard. Just stack up mid, push through bots, and secure those neutrals. Spear will land on the tin owns. Does still have the flash and he has Zeus as well. Waiting around the corner, another spear dodged by both Seos and Tin owns the re-engage with the Zenith Blade, Root coming in as well. Blue purple, not the best guns for this position as Arya goes forward. Arya takes one pop to stop, watch the dragon goes down to Crockett as the rest of DFM look for a little bit more perhaps desperation in this play. The sapling lands and now the TP into the mid lane by Robo. He's built up that Megan Ahar's gonna have the flash across the wall, but Croc chases him down with a twisted advance. And now Lau can really open up. Unipon stunned with the wallop. He only just came back to life. But OG, air hops day as Lau clean up the fights. A massive fight won once again for Loud as they find themselves three kills. DFM are quickly falling apart at the seams as Loud repeatedly punish them for their aggression. And less than 20 minutes in, two dragons to their name, 4,000 the gold lead, and Loud looking to get revenge on DFM after last year at the World Championship. And you just see how difficult it is for DFM to do anything proactive on the map. Harp, so commonly their shot caller, their playmaker, when he is on an engaged support, this team looks drastically different. Here we see, as you say, a difficult to execute comp really biting DFM. Yeah, I mean, DFM had to do a lot in the early game, and you can see them trying to find those picks that we talked about. They have decent mobility, but it's so hard to play. The second that Loud starts to group, the CC is just so prevalent. Of course, those walls aren't really there. We are on the Infernal map. And Root. It's called Terminator. You just walk through the bars, right? Nothing will stop Root on his quest for vengeance. Didn't secure a kill in that last exchange, but still in a very comfortable position, working towards that Infinity Edge second. The Baron up in for well, one second. And I wouldn't be surprised if Loud looked to try and force something around it. Again, they're just stacking up. They're leaving Tinones in a side lane. They know that he can't really be stopped. There is no real kill threat onto him unless multiple members are committed. Robo hovering in the fog of all will now be spotted out for just uh, a battle over control of the river for the time being. And a vision in this red side jungle. Now trying to deny it. Unstoppable onslaught coming out from Toll 2, but Root just dodges behind the wall. Toll 2 now has to flash because Root is there with Sails to Zenith Blade. Dodged away from, and Loud can step forward once again. Don't have too much deep vision. You can see one ward by the Razor Beat camp, one ward that just expired. Well, it's just replaced by the ward at the Red Buff, but DFM walking into darkness. They know right now 
The Dragon hasn't been started, but Root has the perfect guns. Uh, the Baron, sorry. Root has the perfect guns to take it down. The Scry as Bloom spots them as Loud continues to try and open up on it. Robo coming in from the side, the Solar Flare onto half. The Zenith Blade is going to land, but a good decimating smash there from Totu. Stop Sales from engaging. Totu will sacrifice himself oh, for oh. his support. Robo rooted <laughs> and can't quite get in for that Meganar. Totu does go down in the end, a one for nil in favor of Lau. I think that control would stop Robo from having vision, but if he saw what we saw, he was going to go for that Meganar plate. I think it may have been some Flame Chompers or a Charm as well. Well, either way, right now, DFM are a man down. And the Baron has been started. Lown did commit a lot of ultimates. There is a real opportunity for Steel Kill. to stay true to his name. Kinnon's going to try and keep him at bay. Robo's going to do the same. Steel has to jump away. Three the Zenith members. Blade. Loud realized the only way they're losing this if it Steel lives up to his name. So they force him away. The Baron secured for Loud. And now, 22 minutes in, they are 6,000 gold ahead. Beautiful play from Loud, playing true to their win conditions. And very little to criticize overall. They're staying grouped, they're leveraging the power of their composition, and they're walking together as a unit. They're not getting overzealous. Massive improvements from Loud, where one, they got that early game lead against G2, it felt like that they got overconfident, they lost control, and the game very quickly fell out of their hands. But this time around, you can see them taking it patiently, taking it calm, taking it one kill at a time. And now I imagine to play this full one split once again. Both solar laners have the TP available, but don't run the risk. You still have that top tower at your disposal. Let the waves crash into it. You don't care about it. Group up as a four-man stack in mid and allow Robo to start dealing damage on the side lane. Next dragon up in 45 seconds as well. An infernal soul for loud would pretty much be the icing on the cake. This would only be soul point, but they get in the mid tier two. No defense really from DFM. Harp hearted at best as Unipon and Harp just trying to farm up. Harp still yet to complete an item on this Lulu. He has been so denied. Unipon on two though. Kraken Slayer, Phantom Dancer can do work. The issue for DFM is you just don't have a front line. You just don't have anyone that can really step up. Toll two trying to do so, but the CC, the threat on the back line from Loud is just far too great. Inhibitor Tower in the bot lane does fall, so does the mid. And DFM left wondering where it all went wrong. Inhibitors are the focus now. Loud can still push up a very short distance for Robo to join his team. Tin owns Root and Seos step up in the mid lane. Croc just waiting across towards the side as Root. Gale forces forward, hits the Moonlight Vigil and assassinates Harp. Takes him out of the equation. And currently, the summation of everything is looking well in favor of Loud. The inhibitor falls, as does Toll 2. The Gnar onto the back line is flashed away, dashed away by Aria. But Unipon's locked up, and Unipon is shut out of the fight. Loud won in vengeance. They lost to DFM last year. And right now, they're putting them in their place. Elation from the crowd as Loud will win their first game at MSI 2023 and in convincing fashion. A dominant performance from start to finish and a controlled, clean play style. Great execution on the fights. I love the way in which they just took their time and they leveraged the fact that they were stronger as a unit. Yep. They played well as five, they played the team fights very patiently. And this was a 24 minute game, Medic. Clean, controlled, calculated the Baron spawn, they played around it patiently. They allowed both Croc and Root to deal the damage, while three members were committed to make sure that no steal was happening today. And just very well played. If Loud can maintain this performance, they're looking like a strong force in this group. And a really strong force to face up against PSG tomorrow as well. We have to remember, it's non-stop for the rest of planes. Yep. For either of these teams, whoever wins PSG tomorrow, winner of uh, Golden Guardians and Gam. Is it Gam? Gam. It? Yeah, it was Gam. No, Rainbow, Rainbow 7. Seven? Rainbow, Rainbow 7, seven. sorry, yeah. yes. Uh, Rainbow 7, after that, it is a tough road to walk. But what a first step for Loud. I think yep. we saw signs of this in their series against G2. You said it, the early game was clean in that game one, and here they just solidified that mid game, play patient League of Legends. And I think that DFM really need to reevaluate how they approach the draft. Like, I yeah. think that the nearly pick to round out their composition just made it so much harder to play across the board. You could see the idea of wanting to invade, wanting to really shut down that Maokai, but 
as you kind of entered the early to mid game, they just didn't have lanes they could play through. Jinx Lulu is very difficult to find advantages with. The Ari was the only real lane that they could play through, and even then they found one pick, but they never repeatedly ganked yeah. that lane, and so DFM had no control in the early game. There was nothing for them to snowball off of, and then Loud just leveraged their scaling to be able to win out on the fights. And I'll say something I learned from Gorborg when we were talking about these teams behind the stage. Put Harp on a carry. Put him on, uh, at least on someone that can engage. Give him agency, because that is how this team wins. If you can manage to get him ahead, if you can manage to give him the ability to get into the game, <laughs> can do a lot of work. This is a mid lane gank. You know, we saw Tinones being shut down a little bit in the early game, but he just scaled and became way too tanky. It was so difficult for DFM to deal with the loud composition. We're going to hand it over to the analyst desk to break it down, though. Law, take it away. Thank you so much, Medic. What a statement game from Loud here in their series versus Detonation Focus Me on their way to face PSG tomorrow. No cast occurs. There's a lot of fans in the studio. I was going to say, you're going to live a little yeah, yeah. bit. <laughs> But everything is going super well for them so far. I want to talk about the draft first and the priorities on the side of Loud, but also the agency that DFM had with this draft. Yeah, I think Vidi has really hit the nail on the head there too with the Nidalee coming through on five. It's not really a composition where you think to yourself, this is the comp where I'm going to be going Nidalee. There's not yeah. the biggest amount of setup. You find it hard to attack any of the lanes. I think they still used it well. They pretty much attacked the only lane they could have. Swain pre-6 was probably the only place where you could go down and attack. But outside of that, I think Loud just did a great job at just saying, we're going to make it easy for ourselves. We're going to have a composition where it's easy to play for Robo. It's easy to play the Swain into the Jinx. It's easy to play the carry for Root. It, it just like, it everything aligned I for mean, Loud, didn't it? Yeah, it's four meatballs in a... Uh, the now, so you, yeah. just, you just <laughs> run at the enemy, and if they're not massively ahead of you, you're going to be able to win that fight because, like you said, the a team fighting. Meat bolts. Okay, good one. Yeah, nice. it's <laughs> what it, it is what it is, man. And I think it worked very well for them. I think you saw why... Root was someone we were hyping up in this game, especially that last play yeah. there where he's just going in 1v3, it felt like. He's, he's a very impressive player, and I think what is helping elevate this team now and potentially getting revenge yeah. for the series at Worlds. We'll get uh, to the replays and how Loud played the fight, especially a bit later. But first, I want to fall back onto what we were saying earlier today. DFM, Loud, last series we saw them play, they could have won this game. And on the side of Loud, Everything crumbled after the early game, even though they, there were some good elements into these games, but they didn't let it drop this yeah, time. Yeah, definitely. You know, they just had everything they needed in terms of tools in their arsenal to actually just continue to snowball mm -hmm. the lead, even if they're not playing around with the Leone when they're making the plays. There's still the CC and the Maokai, right? And I think they were good at attacking both sides on the map. Maybe one time they overattacked top lane a bit too much where they let Root out to dry, but in general, their team fighting around every single objective was just far superior. Yeah, and absolutely, like even this fight, to be fair, is not the cleanest focus where they're like kind of going on the Lulu, then kind of going on to Steel. Are we hitting Aria or not? And it just shows how much stronger their team fight comp draft was for the fact that they could just kind of charge forward and pick next closest target and keep going. And very well played by them in after the tail end of that, make sure that they get away from Aria, not giving the Aria the resets. Uh, but after that, it was just not close. And you can just see it. There's a big theme to it. You press R on the Maokai on a little flank. You wait for the cats to run you down. You just wait for the rest of them to come in and just lay the buttons on top of each other could not have been easier played out it wasn't like they smashed them at every phase of the game but it never felt close either where no. it was like almost for a 24 minute game it felt more like a grinded out style where it felt pretty hopeless for dfm where it's like i don't see the angle into this game rather than like oh you just got smurfed from minute one yeah but even think at an instant like this replay where they're kind of looking to I mean, at least it looks like in the beginning that like they're going to lose the fight. Then they pick up the Drake, they relocate themselves together again. You get a cool little combo coming out from Robo as well on the Nah. And it's just, they know how to navigate a team fight. They know how to call it. Now we kite back, now we kite forward. And I think they displayed that beautifully in the first game. Shout out to Steel doing his best. <laughs> For real though, but like how good was he actually we, on the Nidalee? Not a great Nidalee pick, great Nidalee player. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> in that situation. Uh, but yeah, just such large health bars to chunk through. And the Jinx got shut down early. Ari's not that high damage. Obviously, Sion's just frontlining. So didn't feel like DFM had a way in there and, and a very heads up draft by Loud. Yeah, and we've talked about how bot lane was going to be one of the central points here. Route versus Utapan. And Route, of course, uh, serving and giving us the performance we were expecting from the very first 
import bot laner in the CBLO, putting his team on his back. Yeah, first import bot laner to win a title right there, crucial one to have with it. But I think it's important to say that he's just a guy that's the backbone, or have been the backbone for Loud. It didn't look like that this time around because everyone was pretty much shining in the same instance. But you see it as well with the mechanics. I think specifically the one game where, or the one instance in the game where they're trying to end, and he just go forward and absolutely styles on them. Yeah, it's it's really cool to see him in there. There's a reason Harp had kind of sold him out in that piece where he was talking about like, oh, I was watching this guy before. Now yeah, I have yeah, to play yeah. against him. Like, oh god, this is gonna be scary. And I think uh, I agree with what some of the casters were saying as well about uh, getting Harp onto more of a playmaker. Lulu's not exactly his main champion that you tend to see. I did feel like the draft got away from them a little bit there, where they're just taking power picks and combos that you used to see, but end up with something that doesn't actually work well together. And also, props to Rob on the top lane, the civil veteran performing a lot. It was expected also in this matchup. They tried to give uh, Tall to a matchup that he could hold the top lane with. With this high in here, it was not enough, unfortunately. We were wondering if it was going to be Rob's day. It is Rob's day so far. On yeah, the honestly, I felt like they were good enough, DFM, with their attacks in the yeah. early game at trying to at least get Robo down a little bit. Just wasn't that successful with it. And I think actually Toltu did a good job of absorbing some of the times where he was attacked. There was that one time where he altered into the we're wall. We're not going to talk about that. Okay, oh. okay, okay. We're not, don't we're talk not about that. About, we're not talking about it. Either way, I thought that he did a fine job on the tanks, but the problem was he never got to a point where he was a frontline with a reliable backline carry because there was no reliable backline carries with DFM in this game. Yeah, Cyan and Tanar, you're just there to mitigate losses. He didn't get slammed in lane. You're looking at the other two lanes to step up. This is also Toltu's role on the team is to just like, if you're not paying attention to top lane, mm -hmm. fantastic for me. And it wasn't until the later portions of the game where, you know, Seosh was running top that that was actually becoming a problem. And at that point, bot lane had already been run over. We're still waiting for the site selection for the next game, but before that, when, what have we seen on the side of Loud? We've talked about how early game was good last time. They were not able to convert this into mid-game mid lead, rather. This time they were, and as in the first series, it was lacking confidence on the side of both teams. I think Loud are showing up pretty confident here today. Yeah, I, I would agree so as well, and I actually want to see some more confident as well in DFM, specifically for their picks. Going into the tournament, I was um, I was chatting with, with Kasu, the, the head coach of DFM as well, and he was kind of telling me that in the beginning of the split, when they had Harp in the Seri Lulu meta, the Lucian Nami meta, they were struggling a bit, but it seemed with, as soon as they made the adaptation where he's on an initiator, facilitator, mm -hmm. Blitzcrank specifically later on in playoffs, or the engaged champions, that completely turned the team around it. They rally around his initiations. They rally around his calling for an engage. The problem is you were playing Lulu and you could not get that. So I'm hoping to see as an adaptation, we don't see the Lulu. We see Harp on his best, which is Harp on an engage. We see DFM choosing blue side. Mm -hmm. what they'll have to go, we'll see. But I, I do think it's really cool on the CB little side that like if they're able to close this series out, it does feel like a mini revolution potentially within yeah. the minor region power yeah. rankings where for the recent history, DFM and the LGL has definitely been the better of the two regions. And if they can actually close this one out, that coincides with the LLA also taking a lead. My hands are off camera, so you're doing something down there. No one can see it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think it's, it's a, a potential restructuring of yeah. where you tend to assume these matchups are going to go. Yeah, and they, Loud got the fans behind them for now. Yeah, we'll definitely see, the loudest fans. Uh, <laughs> yeah. If the LGL powerhouse detonation focus me, avoid elimination here in MSI 2023 planes. We'll be back for game two right after this. Diving in though, the never move won't land and still gets first blood. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, they're basing most of their attention down towards this bottom side. And DFM perhaps looking for a fight as Zenith Wade lands up towards the top side. Avi already caught, he's gonna spear rush away. The Ignite is taking and Root will take him. The charge coming in from Toll 2, but he's a little bit late to the party. Tin owns Root and Seos step up in the mid lane. Croc just waiting across towards the side as Root. Gale forces forward, hits the Moonlight Vigil, and assassinates Harp, takes him out of the equation, and currently the summation of everything is looking well in favor of Loud. Loud won in vengeance, they lost to DFM last year, and right now they're putting them in their place. <laughs> 